Okay, how many people understand G and F sharp? Yeah? You think so? Let's see how well you guys are listening. One, two, ready, go. I learned early in my career that I wasn't going to get anywhere with students if I didn't have their focus. If they didn't see what we're doing as important, the time that we spent together was wasted. And then your fingers are flying, and you do this, I'm going to turn around and look and see if you got it all right. Mr. Anderson has a tremendous capacity for this model. I do, we do, you do. He explains it, he models it, then he has the kids do it with him, and then he has the students do it by themselves. Because of that, he, there's always forward motion in the class, and there's very quick results. Now your bow. I spent a great deal of time on procedures at the beginning. How to walk in the class, how you sit, how you set the instrument down, how you open the case, how you take the instrument out. They may sound like simple things, but if you don't do that, you know, you're gonna fight this battle in March and in April, and they won't have learned the things that you wanted them to learn in September. Everything is numbered. The students have a number, the violins have a number, so students know exactly where to go at all points in time. And that includes walking in the line. Since they are organized, they can get to the material immediately. And they're on the music like almost 100% of the time. Mastery is doing something 10,000 times and 10,000 more. So I came up with this total silence. And it's sort of a game. All right, stop. OK. So we're in guitar position, go back to total silence, which you know is no talking, no sound at all. You're listening for the lights. I mean, just think about that concept. A, a fourth grade kid listening for a light bulb. How completely focused is he at that moment? Okay, how many people understand G and F sharp? Yeah, you think so? I said this is a superpower, because if you use this other places in your life, there's no limit to what you can learn. I believe the value is huge in that. That's what allows us to move faster today than we could have. This is the class for English language learners and most of the students are behind in reading. So here they are having to read a new language and perform at the same time. Cuando estás haciendo esta con esta. Mm-hmm, I see. When he's giving the lesson, if there's somebody that's struggling, that's where I come in. I can uh, stop and work with the student very quickly, whoever's struggling. Then there's still forward motion with that student as well. Resistance would be something that would be a challenge, but I, we don't have a lot of that in this classroom. I don't see the language as any obstacle at all. I teach the music the same way in this class that I do in any other class. What's beautiful about music is there's another side of it that there's a language connection, whether it's reading notes, and they're like, well, wait a minute, what if I read in my classroom? I think that students also get a sense of empowerment, that they can read and perform, and that they can be successful here when they're really struggling in other areas. They can still be very successful with music. I think there's a huge untapped resource for helping kids understand how to, to focus. Oma and a model like Oma can reap benefits that are far beyond our music goals. Ultimately, uh, we want to educate the whole child. Any student that struggles academically with anything, when they're successful in music, they're more successful in class when they leave music as well. It isn't just particular to the English language learners. I would love to see every classroom like this happen like this because I think it would be huge. It would be life-changing for some kids.